Good morning. It is so good to have you all here this morning. Those who are worshiping with us in person and those who are joining us on our live stream. I'm certainly glad to be with you as we gather to praise and glorify our God. We welcome those who are visiting us today. Um, it's a pleasure to have you with us. And if you are a first time visitor, please sign our guest registry and pick up a gift that is been prepared for you uh, before you leave today. A couple of reminders of things going on here at Messiah or coming up. Uh, the first thing is our, West, our food pantry for Wesleyville needs a couple volunteers for tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock and also next Monday at 10 o'clock to help unload food delivery from the Second Harvest Food Bank. Um, if you are Willing and able, uh, please show up around 10 o'clock at the food pantry. It's housed over at the Methodist Church on Shannon Road. Christmas in July celebration is happening right now at Messiah. A tree has been placed in the narthex. You probably saw it on your way in. Load it with Christmas ornaments to support the ELCA Good Gifts Program. There are ornaments for bees and pigs and chickens and other things. Um, if you are interested in supporting that cause, uh, take one, one or more of the ornaments, uh, take them home, bring back the donation next week and drop it with your ornament in the basket that's back there that has been provided. Uh, those gifts are, are then used by the ELCA Good Gifts Program to help families in third world countries develop self-sustaining businesses so that they can support themselves in their own environment. Our Vacation Bible School is happening on July 30th. Um, it's a one-day program. If you know somebody in th who is three years old through fifth grade, uh, that you think might be interested, pass along the um, registration form and encourage them to come. This week, we have a blood drive going on at the Erie Community Blood Bank, Monday through Saturday. You can pre-register, if you'd like, at their website, fourhearts.org, or by calling them, or you could walk in and let them know you want to donate. And when you do donate, uh, you want to tell them you're representing Messiah Lutheran Church, and they'll have you sign a special list for that purpose. Um, if we get eight volunteers donating blood, our church then gets a $50 gift card to be used for something of our own choosing. Yes? There is. In, not just in blood, but in platelets and plasma as well. Um, 
an, another bonus for this month in particular, at the end of the month, they're giving away a, a $1,000 gift card for gas. So th everybody who donates this month will be put into the drawing for that gift card. So extra motivation, but there is a, a dire need for blood in this area. And the nice thing about the community blood bank is that blood is used locally and the plasma is used locally and the platelets are used locally. So, and it only costs you about an hour of time. <laughs> so, well worth it. Uh, our church picnic is scheduled for August 7th at Rolling Ridge Park in Harbor Creek. Um, dinner will be served at 5.30. You are invited to sign up on the sign up poster that's out in the narthex and indicate what you are bringing as part of what, what is it either a dessert or a side dish right Cindy okay um, and um, it's a lot of fun it's a nice way to get to know people uh, in a social setting um, uh, the park itself is a very nice setting the pavilion holds about 100 people and there's a park for kids to play at uh, there are real bathrooms, not porta potties, <laughs> which is a bonus. <laughs> okay. Uh, and last but not least, um, I haven't reminded you about this recently, but I'm going to today. Your church has um, invested in you with Ramsey Plus, which is the Ramsey Financial Solutions, for free. You take one of these cards that are out in the narthex. They have a QR code on them that you can scan with your cell phone or the website that you can type into your browser. Okay. Set up an account. You have free access for one year, 12 calendar months, consecutive calendar months of access to the, some of the best financial resources that are available. Budgeting, you know, is, is the primary one. Um, <clears throat> there are seminars on there. There's the Financial Peace University is on there. Um, there's a lot there. I also encourage you, you do not have to be a member to use this. I encourage you to take several of these. They're out in the narthex on the counter. Pass them around to your friends, your neighbors, your family members. They do not need to be members of Messiah. It's a free gift from Messiah to them. Okay? Encourage them to go on and set up their account. All right? And now let us prepare our hearts for worship. Lord, we come today seeking your presence and your healing love. Give us hearts and hands willing to reach out to those in need wherever we find them. Help us to love you, God, with all our hearts and with all our souls and with all our minds.
name on high. Let us pray. Sovereign God, raise your throne in our hearts. Created by you, let us live in your image. Created for you, let us act for your glory. Redeemed by you, let us give you what is yours. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, place your words upon my lips and in my heart that I may proclaim your truth. Today, we bring to a close our series on the Ten Commandments. While today's scripture passage is not specifically any of the Ten Commandments, it is, however, a summary of them. Today we find that we are challenged as followers of Christ, Christ to fulfill the law of the Ten Commandments in a rather broad way. We're challenged to live out what we believe. We're challenged to live out what it means to be a Christian. We sometimes make living out our Christianity very complicated. And that's probably because as Christians... We often think that in order to be Christian, it only means believing the right things. I have a few examples to illustrate how this has caused a problem over the centuries of Christianity. In the year 1054, there was a schism in Christianity. That means a split. It was called the Great Schism, the Great Divide or division between Western Christianity and Eastern Christianity, now known as the Eastern Orthodox Church. The Bishop of Rome executed, or excommunicated, not executed, excommunicated. The Bishop of Rome excommunicated the Bishop of Constantinople, and the entire Eastern Church. And the Bishop of Constantinople, in return, excommunicated the Pope and the entire Western Church. The issue that led to this was a theological question concerning internal relationships within the Godhead. More specifically, they debate it about whether the Holy Spirit proceeded from the Father and the Son, as was the position and is the position of the Western Church, or from the Father alone which was and is the position of the Eastern Church. And 
And when we think about this, we almost want to say, how on earth could one ever know about internal relations within the Godhead? It's a mystery. I think it's a guy thing. Another one, another example from just a couple centuries ago. Divide it, the Methodist Church and the Lutheran Church. The question in that case being discussed was, is perfection possible in this life? The Methodist said, yes, it was. And the Lutherans, of course, said, no, it wasn't. Believing that we are always sinful and yet justified. The Latin phrase that was, is used in the Luther, for the Lutheran church is simul justus et peccator. And of course, we Lutherans knew we were right on that one. A third example comes from the late 1800s in North Carolina, shortly after the Civil War. A small town businessman from a remote community in the mountains of North Carolina went to one of the larger cities and there for the first time in his life he saw an ice making machine. Now machines that could make artificial ice were a recent invention at that time. He thought this was wonderful. Because now it meant you could have ice all summer long. So he returned to his small community in the mountains of North Carolina. He happened to be a Baptist. And he told his Baptist church about this great new invention. Within a month, that church had split into ice and no ice Baptists. The theological issue in this case being that it was a violation of the natural order established by God to make ice out of season. If God had wanted us to live or to have ice in the summertime, God would have raised the freezing temperature of water. That seems to have been their argument. The point of all three of these examples is that Christians, and maybe even Protestant Christians in particular, have been very concerned about believing the right things, such as infant baptism versus adult baptism, and so forth. So that sometimes we have made being Christian very complicated. As if it's about getting our doctrine right. But being Christian is actually very simple. Even breathtakingly simple. Let me offer three statements in explanation. First of all, being Christian is about loving God and loving what God loves. Loving God and loving what God loves. Loving God is the central point of the gospel text that we just heard. Jesus quoted a passage from the sixth chapter of Deuteronomy. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. And so this is the heart of both the Jewish tradition and because Jesus speaks of it as the great commandment, the heart of the Christian tradition as well. And in addition to loving God, we are to love what God loves. And what does God love? 
The best known answer is a verse from the New Testament. Found in the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world, etc. For God so loved the world. God loves the world. Not just me. Not just you. Not just you and me. Not just Christians. But the world. The entirety of creation. And it's not limited to humans. God loves the world. How more simple can it be? God loves the world. And of course... This is also the central point of the creation stories found in the book of Genesis. After each day in the sixth day creation story, God said it was good. And at the end of six days, God looked at what was created and said, it is very good. Now, of course, God doesn't love the world simply as it is. God has, to use a phrase from Robert Frost, a lover's quarrel with the world. God loves the world and wills that it be a better world. The second statement in explanation is that being Christian is about becoming the kind of person who can love God and love what God loves. We need to be transformed. The process of growing up does not endear us to that deep love of God and that deep love of what God loves. The growing up process inclines us instead to being concerned about ourselves. This happens to all of us. And so Christianity is a way or a path of transformation. Again, it is not so important or all about beliefs. So, there are a number of different paths of transformation. But, in the earliest days of Christianity, the Christian movement, in the years after the first Easter, according to the Acts of the Apostles, At the beginning of the ninth chapter, the Christian movement is referred to as followers of the way. Christianity is about this path or way of transformation. And transformation involves practice. The process of becoming more and more deeply centered in God And centered in God, which is known decisively in Jesus, requires us to pay attention to our relationship with God. In some ways, our relationship with God is just like our human relationships with with each other. How does a human relationship deepen and grow? It deepens and grows by paying attention to it. Spending time in it. Being present to it. And so it is with our relationship with God and this process of becoming more and more deeply centered in God. 
it happens through the traditional practices of the Christian tradition. Worship being the most important collective practice. Prayer being the most widely used individual practice. Prayer and worship are not because God needs them, but they are about our own transformation. And the third statement in explanation is that being Christian is about being part of a community of transformation. It is about living within the Christian tradition and Christian community as a means to the end of transformation. This is church as a community of formation and reformation or reformation. And all of us need this. We grow up in the Western culture that has values very, very different from what is most central to the Bible. That was our first socialization, our first formation. And so Christian community is about becoming involved in a process of re-socialization. So that our sense of ourselves, our identity, is shaped by involvement in Christian community. That's one of the reasons that when we baptize, we encourage parents or explain to parents that they have a responsibility to raise their children in a Christian community. It doesn't happen by osmosis. It happens through intentionality. Christianity, when we think about it, is not very much about believing, even though many people think of it that way. Believing, when we think about it, has very little transformative power. We can believe all the right things and still be quite untransformed. We can believe all the right things and still be a mean and nasty person. Rather, Christianity is about entering into this process of transformation. Being Christian is about passion. It's about our passion for God. That passion that St. Augustine spoke about when he wrote, Our hearts are restless until they find their home in God. And Christianity is also about God's passion for the world. That the world itself, the humanly constructed world in particular, be transformed in the direction of God's dream, a world of justice and peace. Being Christian is also about participating in God's passion. This is what we're called to as Christians. So ultimately, being Christian is about loving God and changing the world. It's as simple and as challenging as that. And it is the way of life for Christians. So as we go forward in our Christian lives, let us seek to be transformed into what God calls us to and live the love of God passionately. And the people of God said,
The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace. The Lord keep you with you all. The Lord keep you. The Lord keep you. JJ, the Lord keep you with you. I'm going to go down to that. And I'll call. Do you want to help her? Go across the whole way. Go across the whole way. Don't cut her. Don't, don't cut through. <laughs> our voices, we lift our hands, we lift our lives up to you, we are an offering, Lord use our voices, Lord use our hands, Lord use our lives, they are yours, we are an offering, all that we have. the limits we place on our love so that we might be filled with God's limited mercy. Watch me, God. We take so much for granted that we cannot see how we have stripped our neighbors of our love and compassion. We have ignored those who have been left half dead by crushing work, those who have fallen into the hand of despair, those who have been abandoned by their families and friends, we are quick to judge them of not being worthy of our time and help. They may be weak or poor or the enemy or because they remind us of whom we once were or could become. 
Rescue us from the power of our sins. Pour out your justice upon us, rather than your judgment. Move us with pity and spur us into action. Help us to hear of the hope that is ours and share it with our sisters and brothers. Let us shower mercy on all those who need it. As you have spared us judgment, help us to spare our neighbors of judgment. As we have received forgiveness for our sins through Jesus Christ, let us also offer forgiveness to our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. Your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. You are free to love as God loves. Lift up your hearts and give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which Jesus was betrayed, our Lord, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> In Christ's presence there is fullness of joy. Come to the banquet.
Let us pray. Life-giving God, through this meal you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. United in Christ and guided by the Spirit, we pray for the church, creation, and all in need. Good and gracious God, you have placed your word of love in the heart of your church. Fill your church with compassion that we bear the fruit of your healing mercy to a broken world. God of grace, hear our prayers. You created the earth with seeds sprouting up to new life. We pray for the flourishing of fruit trees and orchards, vines, and bushes. Prosper the work of those who plant, tend, harvest, and gather. God of grace, hear our prayers. Turn this community toward neighbors in need. Bring aid and support to those who are poor, beaten down, abused, forgotten, silenced, or avoided. God of grace, hear our prayers. Healing God, during this lingering pandemic, we pray that the Spirit will guide us to show patience, exercise flexibility, and care for our neighbor's physical and spiritual well-being. Inspire in us a spirit of sacrificial love and concern for one another, especially the most vulnerable. God of grace, hear our prayers. We confess, repent, and reject the times when we as a church and as individuals have been silent in the face of racial injustice. Heal the hearts of those affected by racism in our community and worldwide. God of grace, hear our prayers. Reveal your healing power to those who are sick or dying, especially Bishop Michael Lozano, those on our prayer list, and those we now name in your presence. Be with them in their time of need, God of grace. Yes. We give thanks for all who have died and now celebrate the inheritance of life in you, especially Elizabeth Greeley and Kenneth Ring. Keep their example of faithfulness always before us, God of grace. Yes. We pray for peace in the world, especially in Ukraine, and for the safety of all military personnel, especially those who have congregational ties. God of grace, <clears throat> hear our prayers. God of every time and place, in Jesus' name and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. May the God of peace Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless us, comfort us, and show us the path of life today and always.
in peace and love your neighbor. Thanks be to God. And I do hope you all have a great and blessed week. Thanks, Kathy. Thanks, Adrian. Great job.